There we go. Okay, we are live. Okay. So we ask with the conventional question, anything to ask or tell? Sure, I got a couple things. Talk to me. Well, one thing is one thing is that I find really fascinating um, is that I emailed you about feeling like an Amazon woman. Yes. And if it were up to me and my memory, I would swear on whatever, on Bibles or whatever. Or telephone of, books. <laughs> of, of whatever is associated with, you know, doom will come to you if you lie. Hmm. I would swear that, that that was the first time I told you about that. Mm -hmm. so, so you gave me the link for the, art, for the video. Where we where we had where I used the phone and you used the the computer, mm -hmm. and son of a gun, there I am talking about my um, Amazon woman experience, and I have literally no recollection of that. No, that's good. You are in an altered I, state. I was in an altered state, and and why? And I think I know why that's good. Please tell me why that's good. Gee, I don't know. <laughs> All right, you don't want to know. It's just like this. When something is so unfamiliar to you that there's no pre-existing memory, the most you've got at the onset of the experience is short-term memory. To convert from short-term memory to long-term memory generally requires intention and intensity, which can take rep the form of repetition or simply a lot of intensity in the first occasion, which is not typical of casual experience. So it would evaporate from short-term memory. That's the nature of short-term memory. Does that make sense to you? No. no See, you're in an altered I, state again. I think I'm already <laughs> in an altered state. Yeah, because the very notion of understanding requires you to tap what you've heard into your long-term memory so the words have meaning. If you don't have long-term memory, you just have short-term, it kind of deflects off your attention the way a fast-moving uh, stone skips off water surface. So, I'm, so I'm, now I'm going to ask you a follow-up question then, so perhaps I can, I can capture what I was asking you about. Mm -hmm. So in this instance, then I agree with you. I would I agree with you that entire time that I was um, that we were in that session, I I had so much difficulty, and I remember how much difficulty I had with doing the crystal crown procedure. And I did the crystal, the same crystal crown procedure last night, and phew, totally different experience. Mm -hmm. So then, which if I don't remember, if I remember, I guess I got caught up when you were giving me the explanation right now. I was getting caught up in one of two places. I was in one of two places. Mm -hmm. I was either on the table feeling as an Amazon woman or I was later telling the story. And I guess I was in an altered state when later I was telling the story. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where I got caught up. So tell me again now, please. Okay, let, let's approach it differently. Memory formation most easily works when you have a similar memory that you can link the new memory to. Okay. When you don't have a similar experience, you get a discontinuity between the thing that is so different from what you've experienced and your usual experience that you have difficulty reaching into and connecting with the unusual experience. It just doesn't have a bridge with familiar experience. And why is living there good? Oh, it just means that you had a, a significant experience different from your usual in a direction that's desirable. Which was the book? When it's so different from your usual experience, it points to a really different experience from your usual experience. Right, but which was what was the difficult? What was the different experience? The Amazon woman thing and the state you were in when recounting it. It's not a typical identity of yours. 
your identity typically is the one that you occupy most of the time in our calls which is uh, you, you can fill in the blank of the words <laughs> rather than my presuming to give yeah. you know words yeah. to you but yeah. it's obviously atypical for you to feel like an Amazon woman right right Right. So your recounting of it is also atypical. Mm. Okay. You're asserting an identity which is desirable, but not typical. Yeah. Years ago, I spent a lot of time with an artist who was creating very unusual artworks, which he said was for the purpose of rise of consciousness of humanity. Okay. He was playing for big stakes. He used the phrase heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. okay? Big stakes. And his work involved capturing these intuitions and making them tangible in artistic works. He called that bringing them down, making them tangible. In other words, to bring them into earth plane density or sure. earth time space density. When I first came out of training in somatics, I was having an ongoing stream of revelation in myself and it occurred to me to do something similar to what he did only I did it by documenting the discoveries so I would be on the floor working out action patterns which were being revealed to me and getting up in midstream onto my computer and typing in notes I was capturing something from the unconscious that had been surfaced my ongoing work has been exactly of that kind so I have you know through his influence and whatever I learned how to capture what was otherwise unavailable because it was subconscious or come emerging from the unconscious or collective unconscious the somatic education programs came from the collective unconscious because it isn't just personal it's not just transpersonal it appears to be common pretty much to everybody because those procedures work for everybody as far as I've seen who does them correctly so what you just experienced when you have an unusual state like that to bring it into tangible enough form or dense enough memory dense enough that it sticks around it has persistence then you can recount it to someone else but it's still an altered state for your usual identity and so you have to bridge over and recapture the thing and in so doing you put yourself into that altered state again you may have to listen to this explanation in replay for it to sink in mm -hmm. but I had that kind of experience commonly when I was in my 20s and I was hanging out with uh, let's call him an uncommon individual who is my initiator into spiritual practice and we would sit on the back deck Saturday afternoons the group of us we had six of us and he would do discourse on spiritual practice and such similar matters and I would find that I could follow him up to a point and then I would start to space out and I could no longer follow him right he was capturing stuff from the unconscious in his dharma rap okay, in his discourse that I didn't have access to right. so I couldn't follow him I didn't have the memory imprint and I didn't have the intuitive reach at that time the very work that I got from him enabled me to capture material that was tacitly evident to me but I couldn't capture it well enough to put into words and after one rolfing session with him and I'd go home this stuff would now be accessible to me so he wasn't just a garden variety rolfer right. okay? so you see the parallels I, I do I do the and struggle. it goes with God winks by the way okay. right the struggle I'm having is, I think it's just, here's the, here's the bottom line that I'm struggling with. He takes a breath. <laughs> Brace yourself. 
I remember the fee, the sensation of the Amazon woman stronger than I remember having the conversation with you about it. Mm -hmm. That's because you were mm -hmm. having to bridge between the two experiences. Huh? Yeah, then I will have to listen to this again. Yeah, because the... I'm sure I'm sure what you're saying is in there. I'm just, as you say, I'm not having access to it right now. Yeah. Well, it's in the first 10 minutes of our conversation. Uh, the bridging is a special maneuver of attention. It's a maneuver that also applies when discerning the deeper meaning of dreams. Pretty obvious if you think about it, because dreams are again emerging from the unconscious and subconscious. But you forget them when you're in the waking state. Right. You need to make a bridge between that unconscious material and the waking state. That's a special maneuver of attention. Just experiencing the thing isn't that special maneuver. Right. It's one required half of it, the subconscious part, the other part being the waking state. But the bridging requires extra free attention, sufficient, to be able to capture the thing and bring it into the waking state which is a whole nother frame of reference. So you're bridging between frames of reference. You're making a bridge between the unconscious, subconscious, and the waking state. That's the bridging. And as you're talking about this, as mm -hmm. you're telling this to me, it, I, I guess it, what I, my sense is, I've been, as we have these, we've had these kinds of conversations before, mm -hmm. God winks and whatnot, my sense is that I've been doing, well, perhaps all of us have been doing this for a long time, but I think I'm, I think I've been more aware of some of these things mm -hmm. than I realize. I think I've had experiences like this before. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm aware of them. Mm -hmm. But it was fascinating to look back and see how much trouble I had in that appointment with the um, crystal crop procedure. Because mm -hmm. I remember, I remember how difficult it was for me to stay connected. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yes, I was definitely. It's a whole new meaning to spa day, I guess, because I was definitely in an altered state with you. Mm -hmm. That's right. And yet, spa day was the, the actions of spa day. I just did my clay, my clay facial and my clay foot bath stuff, mm -hmm. as, as usual. So that wasn't that wasn't the unusual experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It must have been you talking to you on a Sunday. That must have been it. You were the special thing in my life that day. Could be. Or I was driving you in a direction that was atypical. Now, I'll tell you one more useful, this is a useful piece of information. And that is you can use the Crystal Crown procedure to recapture dream content as long as you've got a thread to grab onto and then discern its deeper meaning using crystal crown. You don't have to do the whole thing. You can do probably just act one. Or what I did this morning, because I had an interesting dream, is I did acts two, three, and four, which are the three rings, the three ring circus. And as I did that, I suddenly discerned the relevance of the dream to my life circumstance and the waking state. So, you, and I've used it for that purpose that is to say, so-called interpretation of dreams. This is a misnomer, by the way. If you have to interpret the dream, you might as well toss it out the window. Because interpretations tend to be mental, rational, reasonable, logical connections. Whereas if you do it with a tetra seed procedure, you're bypassing all of that mentality and going straight to the fundaments the foundation of attention, intention, memory, and imagination. And that shows up the stuff. Yeah. So. Right. Well, if I, right. If I tell you my dream, you're just going to put your stuff on my, on my stuff. And yeah, that's that? right. That, and applies to all dream interpretation books. <laughs> Toss them right out the window. 
there is there is much bollocks as astrology. If you go, if you, but if you contact the feeling of the dream directly, the information is untainted, and insights spontaneously pop into your mind about what these things signify. And as Jung said, the dreams are the royal road to the unconscious. And he wasn't whistling Dixie. And I want to say, well, I haven't been dreaming in a long time. But then again, I, this morning, this morning I do remember waking up and thinking, I'm dreaming right now. <laughs> <clears throat> so, so I guess I would be lying to you, which apparently I do a lot. On which side? <laughs> yes, I caught that, yes. I'm still stuck on, specifically, seriously answering that question, I'm still stuck on um, sleeping on my right side, which is not my preferred side. But, but in this situation that I'm in, I don't have, yet, I don't have the ability to flip over. And so I don't stir very much at night anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. May I comment on that sidedness? No, no, okay. you can't talk about anything. <laughs> oh, I, all right, I'll just listen. I'm all ear. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you're my mentor. I pay you money. No, I don't want to hear a thing. You know, that wouldn't be so unusual, really. Among certain <laughs> types, maybe. All right, I will invite you into the conversation. I would love to hear what you have to say. I already forgot what it was. It was a well. Just just to recap, in case there's something to capture, I was I was saying how I'm I'm sleeping on my unfavored side, right. and I much so don't stir. Yeah, and the thing is that the yogic teachings suggest that you do sleep on the right side. It has to do with the position of the heart, the position, the shape of the lungs, and the the shape of the stomach, and the, where the exit and entries are in the stomach, and what gravity does to the contents. So they say you should sleep on your right side. So I've been doing it wrong all these years. Now you've been doing it right all these years. You're sleeping on the right side, ain't you? Only for the last, only since I, only since I broke my foot. Well, okay, so, so that was fortuitous. Yeah. It's more better to sleep on the right side. Although I spend some time on the left side. <laughs> there was something else. There was something else that okay. came to mind. I think it's lost. I'll, I'll claim it lost. Okay, well, if it, if it pops up, 